In this video, I'm going to show you how to program this Logitech remote control that can control up to eight of your devices coming up right now. Hey everybody, Rudy here from Tega Bath Productions with another video to help you fix various things. Today we're going to be working with this Logitech Harmony 350 remote. I'm going to show you how to program it. It can control up to eight items, but I'm only going to be doing about three or four just to give you the idea how to do it. Uh, this remote requires you to download software on your computer and use this USB port right here in the front of the remote to, uh, you know, to connect to your computer. All right, so let's dive right in. As you can see, we're on my desktop here. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to setup.myharmony.com and you're going to have to download the software and set up an account. Uh, so here's your Harmony 350 right here. Uh, of course, you've got all these different ones for the different Logitech remotes. And get the software. Download the software. And then accept and download and follow the instructions to set up the uh, software from there. All right. So after that, uh, I've already got the software open right here. You'll have to create an account. Um, it's going to ask you to log in with Facebook or an email address or something like that. I've noticed that the Facebook login is a little bit flaky. It doesn't seem to work about half the time. Uh, but maybe you'll have better luck with that if you want to go that route. Uh, give it a try. Okay, once you get through the login, go ahead and click Add a Remote. And then you're going to get this uh, dialog right here. Uh, one thing I've noticed, if you plug in your USB to a hub, a USB hub, uh, chances are it's not going to recognize the remote. And some of the uh, USB ports on a desktop computer are not directly uh, connected with the motherboard. And those may not work either. That's what I have found. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and plug in the USB. That goes right in the top of the remote right here. Okay, it recognized the remote right away. Uh, chances are if it's the first time you're plugging in the remote, you're going to get a little box down here in the corner on a Windows machine that says uh, setting up remote, adding software, blah, 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 and then the program may not recognize the remote. Um, if that happens, just unplug the remote and plug it back in and you should be fine. Okay, software and license agreement. Yep, we're going to read all that and agree to it. Do I have a new setup or I want to copy settings? We have a new setup. So on this, uh, it wants you to add in the model numbers of all the devices that you want to add. Uh, your best bet is, is to walk around the house and uh, either with your cell phone and take pictures of the model number sticker or a pen and paper and just write down the model numbers. And what, right here, I'm going to put in my Dish Network box um, just for the sake of the video. Uh, where I'm actually going to use the remote is in a, in a satellite location, a secondary location where the Dish box is not located there. Um, you need a UHF remote to make that work. Uh, so if you're going to use this remote in the location where your box is at, it will work. If you're going to use it in another room and it has to transmit back to the box, it's not going to work. Uh, DirecTV might have something similar to that. I don't really know, but I know on Dish Network you have to have a UHF remote to make the secondary locations work, okay? Okay, here's a special note on the uh, Dish Network receivers. If your 
uh, remote address isn't set to one on the dish receiver itself to address number one it says you can have up to 16 different remote addresses um, your dish network box has to be set to address one so here's the instructions here on how to do that if it isn't already it might already be set to one because that's the default address so I just wanted you to know about that All right, there's my five devices, and click done. Now on these buttons here, uh, right here, you can set them up for a short press or a long press, okay? Um, see how it's, it kind of arranges it, how you might uh, want it, but in this case, I think the uh, Dish DVR should be a short press. Uh, so we'll put this to the Dish DVR, and then we'll put this to the Apple TV. Because uh, the Apple TV is probably going to be secondary. Uh, just to give you an example of how to do that. Uh, the long press is a two-second press of these buttons. Um, you know, that way you can get your eight devices out of four buttons. Done. Okay, so this remote only supports one activity, the Watch TV button. Um, so that's, that's all that means is, is when you push that Watch TV button, it's going to turn on the power to your TV, your sound bar, your amplifier, your satellite receiver box or cable box or whatever. And how many, ever, how many of those devices you want to come on at the same time, it'll set the inputs automatically. Um, the only thing is these devices have to stay in sync. Um, if you have one, all three come on, say, and then you turn one off independently for some reason, now they're out of sync. And when you hit that Watch TV button again, it's going to turn the other two off and then turn the one back on. So they either have to be all on or all off, or that activity is not going to work right. All right, in this case, I'm not going to activate the Dish DVR because, like I was saying, um, I don't have a dish DVR in the location that I want to use it in, but you can set this to come on if, if that works for you. Uh, but in my case, I have the, the TV, the Bose, and the Apple TV. And I want those three to come on together when I hit the uh, wa uh, Watch TV activity button. So whatever inputs you're going to use... Um, you can select from any of these inputs to your TV. Mine is set to HDMI 1. Please confirm that the setup is correct. Looks like it is. And it's leaving these two turned off. All right. Watch TV activity is created. Click done. Okay, this is going to want to know how is your volume controlled, okay? We're going to use the Bose amp on all three of these. Bose amp. Bose amp. And you can set up some of your favorite channels. Um, of course, this is probably going to be from your satellite box. Like if you wanted to do that from here, here's how you change it to the Dish DVR. You can put in your favorites, and that's these buttons right here on the remote. I'm not going to input any of these because my Dish DVR isn't going to work on this remote. And that's it. I'm syncing the remote. Click on Sync and let it get done. Um, if it goes to 99% and stops, it's happened to me, Take the batteries out of the remote for a few seconds, maybe up to a minute, maybe two minutes, and let it reset. Shut the software down, restart the software, and try to sync it again. And I've read some of the reviews for the remote, and that's happened to other people, so it apparently is a common problem. So try that first. All right, I'm all synced up. Now I'm going to show you. I'm going to test the remote, and then I'm going to show you how to change the characteristics of the different buttons when I come back. We're going to test the Watch TV activity. All three devices are off. We're going to hit Watch TV. OK. 
Keep the remote pointed at the TV as long as the green lights are lit. All right, everything came on good. I had Apple TV set for a long press, so I'm, I pressed the, uh, the button on there. Cable PC button in my case. And it looks like everything's working. Can we control the volume? Yep, the green light's flashing on the bows. This next part here, I'm going to show you how to reassign the buttons on the remote. Uh, most of you probably won't even need to do this, but in case you do, I'm going to show you real quick how to do that. Would you, you have to log out of the uh, software and go back into the software so that you get to this uh, page here where it's kind of like your gallery. Uh, so click back on the remote again and then it allows you to have these um, buttons here on the left uh, so you can modify the remote. Uh, if you click buttons, um, let's just say for example we want to reassign some buttons for the TV. So we're going to the TV, go, and if you notice here, there's a red box that gets around some of these buttons, see that? You can reassign those buttons, okay? Uh, say we want to change the red button, okay? Look what happens here. Uh, command assign, uh, menu, I, I reassigned it already. Um, but uh, say you want to change that, all right? Um, let's say uh, input HDMI 1 for, for the red button. So hover over that and then come over here to assign. There you go, it's changed to HDMI 1. Now I'll do another one real quick. Green. Uh, let's just say we want this one to be video 1 input on the green. Okay, that's it. So notice when I go back to the red, it says HDMI 1, um, the green, input video 1, and then of course the yellow, they haven't been assigned yet, but you get the idea. And then what you want to do is save that, and then you sync the remote so that it can remember that, okay? Um, the other thing that you can do is you can teach the remote from, a, from the original remote, if some of the functions are not listed here and you have a function on your original remote that you want to work, you can do that. Go back to the TV and you go down here instead of fooling with this, add or fix a command. Okay, we want to fix a command that doesn't work. Let's go to red. Teach again. Okay. Next. Now it's going to want to plug in the remote. Um, before I hook the remote up, I wanted to show you, you're going to want to have the remotes like this. Here's the original remote and here's the Harmony. You're going to want to have the original remote behind it like this, either you know, flat on a table or something like that so they stay in line with each other. Plugging in the remote. Okay, point the original remote at the bottom of the Harmony, align the remotes and keep them within three inches. So I'm going to reassign the red to uh, display, just for example. Push it and push the button. There it goes. It recognized it. You have successfully taught the red command. That's it. And then, of course, click Save. And then you're going to want to sync the remote. And that's all you got to do. All right, guys. Any questions, comment below. And if you like this video, click on the Like button. And subscribe to my channel. I come out with videos like this as often as I can. Thanks for watching.